I think we're live. It is welcome to Coach David Live with Pickleball Diary. See, I have all these names Coach David Pickleball, Pickleball Diary, Coach David Live. Should I just stick with one? Should I just stick with Pickleball Diary? Because this is kind of, this is like a real diary, a video diary. Um, but I like the name Coach David Live. It sounds cool to me. All right, so today is July 13th, 2021. 7 a.m., 91 degrees, and it is muggy. This is a rare sight for Lake Havasu. Can you see the storm clouds? But it's called uh, monsoon season. We have things that are monsoons, which are just wicked thunderstorms. Kind of what I went through, you know, the other day in Prescott, where it hailed on us, but there was no damage to my car, thank goodness. Okay, so today's topic, there was a comment from Julie Bender, yesterday which I thought was pretty good to talk about it's how to find tournament partners so I wrote some notes so I'll be looking down on my notes um, so the main way I do it is if the people I play with the people I play with I usually partner with because I'll play in a lot of the smaller tournaments like uh, you know Wickenburg and Bullhead City and um, places like that Lake Havasu so I'll play in some small tournaments with local people uh, usually whoever the top guy is around I'll try to partner with them uh, and a lot of times for the last three years or so four years probably I, I played with my wife and mixed all the time so it's pretty convenient and we're gonna talk about mixed doubles playing with your spouse tomorrow and we have a special guest tomorrow so check it out at 7 a.m. tomorrow with our special guest you could probably figure out who it might be but we will wait till tomorrow. So main, mainly, people find partners at their local club, at their local membership, people that they're already playing with, playing against. That's usually how you find a partner. Now, if you go to bigger events, like out of town, and to find people within your age and skill, on pickballtournaments.com, once you sign up for a tournament, there's a spot that says playing needing partners so you go on the playing needing partners list you find somebody looking for somebody in your division and you email them that's how it works through their system a lot of times um, if I kind of know the person already or are familiar with them or I know they're familiar with me I will instant message them through Facebook messenger that's a lot of times I get uh, they usually respond that way because a lot of people for some reason don't respond through the playing needing partners email or they don't respond quick enough because a lot of times you got to sign up and pay the day that the registration opens because a lot of these brackets fill up the 5-0 it was easy to get in 5-0 divisions because those brackets hardly ever filled up because there's not a whole lot of 5-0s and then a lot of the yeah and then pro that was pretty hard to find partners um, and then now that I'm a 4-5 it's gonna be easier to find partners but they're doing construction back here behind us at the that big house up there um, so a 4-5 is gonna be easier to find partners but the brackets are gonna fill up faster so it's gonna be more difficult it's nice man if you can get one partner that you play with all the time that's the best way to go. That's why a lot of these pros just play with one same, the same person all the time or rotate through, you know, two or three of the same people because you you need to figure out how they play. And this game's all about partnerships. It's all about how to play with your partner. It's, we aren't all Ben Johns that can, you know, take a whole court and still win the game. Um, I direct message to local players. Uh, another way is people you meet at tournaments. They either beat you or you liked how they played and you thought, oh, that would match my style of play. That's what Tin Man does that a lot. So Greg, one of our players here in Havasu, he will, I mean, he's very outgoing. He'll, he'll ask anybody, hey, I like how you play. And he's super nice and everybody likes him. So he will uh, ask people from these tournaments if they'll play in another tournament with them. So that's, that's pretty cool. 
so that's another way to find people. And I have asked people from tournaments, and um, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. It's just you gotta you gotta get yourself out there if you want to find the right partner. Uh, okay. And Julie Bender says, "What do you look for in a tournament partner?" And my two main things. She asked me who my favorite partners were, but. I can't really say because every, everybody's been different. They've had different kill, skill sets. I like playing with all my partners throughout the years. So I couldn't really answer that question. Cliff Pickleball, I wish I could play more tournaments. Yeah, and I'm gonna get into that. Uh, you know, that kind of leads into another thing is tournaments, the cost of tournaments. Not just registering and getting in, but travel costs and all that. I'm gonna show you what, um, what I pay I mean basically all extra money goes into tournaments but that's that's our that's our vacations you know we treat them like vacations um, and we'll get into that probably maybe Thursday do that one so back to what do I look for in a partner somebody who keeps the ball in play somebody who keeps the ball out of the net that is my main thing I look for somebody with consistency that keeps the ball in play you cannot win games if you're hitting the net you cannot win games if you're hitting the ball out so consistency I'd rather have the ball me personally smashed down my face because the ball was over the net than a ball into the net into the net you can't do anything with so I, I that's what I that's what I value the most out of a partner. Somebody who can just keep the ball in play, keep the ball in play. Let the other team make the mistakes. Let the other team make the mistakes. It's real hard to win a game, but you can certainly lose a game by trying to win. Let the other team lose the game. I kind of see it as a hot potato, you know. I want to give that hot potato back. Once they put it over the net, I want to give that hot potato back to them. Uh, remember to hey hit that like button real quick if you can. Uh, that's kind of my whole live stream today was how to find a partner and I think I covered do you have any other ideas put them in the comments um, anybody on the live stream that wants to type something real quick I can answer it it could be on this topic or any topic uh, Cliff Pickleball earlier wrote he wants to play more tournaments so I don't know where he lives I'm kind of fortunate out here in Arizona that we have a ton of tournaments to go to I go to, from here, I'm three hours from Vegas, three hours from Surprise, Arizona, which is the mecca of pickleball right now, in my opinion. Um, and then I'm three hours to Prescott, uh, three hours to Palm Springs, six hours to the beach cities in California. So I can really find tournaments easy. Plus we have local events. And, I, and there's a local circuit called the Pig Chase. Here we go, Todd Peterson. Lake Trinidad said, do you look for a play style that complements yours? Soft or hard, patient or aggressive? That's a great question. I actually play good. If somebody's a great dropper and dinker, that, that always makes the game super, super easy. Because they drop. I'm best at the kitchen. I wasn't a tennis player, so the back game, the moving up game, I'm getting way better at it. But that's the hardest part of the game for me. I'd rather be at that kitchen. That's why I've learned, I have did all my practice for years is just dropping the third, getting me and my partner to the net. Because it actually works better in mixed for me. Because if you can't hit a, a wicked tennis drive, you're not rolling over anybody. Everybody, for the most part, can block a shot unless you can drive it like a 5-0 tennis player. And then you can roll over people until you hit a wall. At some point, you're gonna find people that can block anything. And then what do you do? If you don't have that drop in your back pocket, you're going to struggle. So me, if somebody does have a great drop and can get me to the net, that's that's easy. But now I'm getting real better at resets and um, working my way up. So if I do have a strong tennis player as a partner, I'm just going to go get ready to shake and bake. I'm going to get I want them to hit that drive, but they have to be good. The ball has to go and play. It can't hit the net. It can't go out the back. We have to give ourselves a chance to win the point. So that was a good question. Um, anybody else out there? Or I'm gonna close this out. We're at about 10 minutes. 
Okay, so if a lot of people don't come on a live stream, but they watch, they watch it after. I get most of my views after, you know, I post on uh, my Facebook page, YouTube in general. So I have like 70, almost 7,500 subscribers. I'd like to get up to at least 10,000. That'd be fun. So if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you know when I post a video. I try to post every day at 7 a.m. whether or not, and I'm, I probably won't play this week either because it's windy, hot, and muggy, and our indoor courts are closed this week. Let's see, Phil Saunders Jr., best ways to learn, then practice the shirt third shot drops best way to learn and then practice the third shot drops in my opinion yes constantly practice hitting a third shot drop all the time <laughs> when I eventually you know because I have a tutor machine so I would I would try when I was first learning I would hit every shot under the book under the sun during my practices and then eventually once I got better I realized when I play all I ever needed was a drop and a block though that was the two main things that got me to 5-0 was a, a drop and a block so that's what I ended up practicing and I, I always had practice by myself nobody nobody really likes to drill they say they want to drill and practice but most people don't actually they just want to play which is cool this is a fun ass game to play so people want to play but me I wanted to get better so I like to drill I like to practice but with one person you can't practice dinking that's the hard part so you need to practice your dinks drops and blocks in my opinion those that's the main thing okay great question all right guys that's it uh, hit that subscribe button I'll be back here tomorrow 7 a.m. with a special guest mystery guest and we're gonna talk about playing with your spouse is it good or bad and I have a lot of insight on that Okay, see ya. I'm not going to do the boop now. I'm just going to close out. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye.